I'm Al Phil Reese. I'm Anna Safford. And this is Mod Po Minute, actually five minutes. We're hoping to scratch the surface of a short poem that we like. So let's get started. So I'm here with Davey Niddle. Hi, Davey. What's up, Al? We are going to take five minutes to talk about a poem we'll just scratch the surface of what we could say about it by E.B. Shockley in a book called Semi-Automatic. It's a fine book. It came out a couple of years ago. And we're looking at a prose poem called A One-Act Play, and let's begin by inviting you to read it. It's hard to read. Good luck. A One-Act Play. A man in blue sees the black in man, sees the black boy as man, sees the black man as bear, bears the black bear ill will, makes the black man ill, sees the black man on the make, seizes upon the man's black makeup, makes up what he wills. The black man sees the man in blue, bees the blues in man, demands the blues back off, deems the blues black, does the blues deed, deeds the blues back, lacks what blacks need, needs the true blue, bleeds the true black, blue and black, that's a fact, black and blue, redo, redo. Wow. Uh, we have two, we have subject and an object. Mm -hmm. Who's the subject, at least at first? The, sub the subject at first is a man in blue. Who we understand might or to be might a not police be. officer. So that's probably yeah. the police sees yeah. a black man. And importantly sees... A man in, a black in man, not a man in black. The black in man also, right. yeah. And so we get these first four usages of sees before it becomes seizes. Sees the black in man, sees the black boy as man, sees the black man as bear, sees the black man on the make. And so all of these modes of having a lens that refuses a human to human interaction, of objectification, of uh, identification with animality, of a kind of um, Michael Brown oriented discourse of identifying boys as men, boys engaging in a harmless activity as people who are having threat projected onto them. Can verbs be biased, prejudicial, racist? I mean, you're asking a question about verbs in context. I mean these verbs. You know, it I mean is these part, verbs. I mean, I think someone sees another, someone yeah. deems another, someone mm -hmm. makes up what another says. Yeah. Someone bees, someone deeds. I think what's amazing to me about this poem is that verbs can compress an act of seeing as itself a biased act. So not that the verb to see is biased, but that what's being seen is always already biased. That what appears... But seeing itself yeah. is not always already biased. Perhaps it's the case in this poem that seeing itself has to work not to be. Say that again. Perhaps it is the case in this poem that seeing has to work not to be biased. You said it exactly. <laughs> Say it in different words. <laughs> this is hard. It is hard. I think that what's not being seen here is a man in blue seeing a man in black. Because we get a man as a unit modified by the blueness, modified by being a police officer, right. and we never get a black man in a way where racialization is not always coming with bias by means of the viewer who is a police officer. Let's talk quickly about the dexterity and I would say brilliance of the deployment of the variable symbols. Mm -hmm. So black and blue, obviously, sure. a reference to what happens to you when you're beaten. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, blues. Yep. Blues. Uh, Bleeding black instead of red. Mm -hmm. uh, but also bleeding black instead of... There's like a red, white, and blue echo in here. Mm -hmm. Why is it called a one-act play? I think there's a relationship between it being a one-act play and redo, redo appearing at the end mm -hmm. of thinking about a play as something that it's possible to rehearse, but also thinking about if a play is a two-character play and ends with the death of one of the characters, Yes, it's kind of it. Davey, last question. 
in what way does a writer like Stein, but there are obvious other sure. influences yeah. here, um, bear relevance to what Evie Shockley is trying to do uh, on the issue of police brutality and race? I mean, you don't think of Stein as informing that poetics. Well, Stein is certainly interested in a very compressed poetics of gender, of trying to take gendered objects and gendered relationships and break them down into very, very simple syntax. And I think that some of those same tensions of taking enormous conceptual problems and breaking them into tiny relationships between two words is definitely something that's happening here. That's great. Thank you, Davey. Thanks, Al. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for ModPo, a free and open course at modpo.org.